maintaining a database of millions and millions of features is no ah all right no easy feat. Uh, OpenStreetMap contains millions of features, thousands of mappers, and maintaining and ensuring data quality has always been a challenge throughout the entire history of the project. At Facebook, we've been thinking about ways to maintain the quality, but also improve it and ensure that only good data gets on the map. So today we're going to talk about how AI and tooling can do that. So to start, you may be surprised to learn Facebook has maps. We do indeed. Uh, and in fact, it, it's in lots of places. It uh, turns out that high quality maps make for better user experiences. Uh, so we have maps in places to search in events, travel, uh, humanitarian causes, and jobs. Uh, or even in things like, if you get lost at a conference, maybe you share your location on Messenger with a friend. It, in fact, there's over 140 different use cases currently that use maps at Facebook in our library of apps. So we now use OpenStreetMap globally for the base map at uh, Facebook. But on top of that, we have different layers of other additional data. So things like places data, um, job listing locations, uh, pins. So really, most of the, the same times uh, when you are interacting with a map on Facebook, it's probably using different data than actual OSM. But we're here to talk about data integrity today, mostly. So we approach this problem in two different ways, uh, proactively and reactively. One of the ways we act reactively is through map reports from our products. When there's an issue, uh, users can submit a report to us saying, hey, like this town name is wrong, this road looks incorrect. Uh, and it comes to one of our teams here. Uh, currently, we get about 600 reports a day that are maps relevant. And our team goes through each, each and every one of them. There's uh, been 192,000 so far that, since we switched over to OpenStreetMap. And uh, these get kind of put into two different buckets. Uh, if they turn out to be actually Facebook data, we do a fix on Facebook. So in this case, uh, OSM was correct, but our places data team uh, city name was misspelled. A user let us know when we got it fixed. More typically, though, we find uh, an issue with OpenStreetMap. And when that happens, our team goes in and fixes it. So uh, directly from reports, we've fixed 388 uh, issues currently. Uh, but beyond that, we've also discovered uh, you know, broader scale issues, such as uh, generic names. Uh, we found name equals yes, name equals road, name equals building, thousands upon thousands of these on, on the map. And we've uh, set up tasks to fix these. Uh, it, we have a partner in Indonesia, Hot Indonesia. They've fixed 15,000 of them uh, themselves using map roulette. And outside of that, we've made public tasks. Uh, where we fixed over 30,000 so far, plenty to go. So if you've been on MapRoulette in the last six months or so, you may have seen some of these incorrect name challenges we've created. Uh, and there's plenty of these. <laughs> we've uh, found, though, that uh, we, you know, we work on these ourselves, too, publicly. Uh, our team goes in and fixes things. But we found that the community really engages, too. Uh, if you you know, provide the information, people want to go fix that themselves. Uh, so uh, you can see these are just different buckets, but in the far left one, uh, the community actually did like 6,000 fixes themselves just because they knew that it was there and they wanted to make the map a better place. Uh, and shout out to Martime for the new map roulette. It is so good. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, we want to be proactive as well. And that means stopping bad data from ever getting on the map. Uh, one of the ways we've done this is uh, internally we've used ID for several years now for AI-assisted road mapping we do, and we built internal tools. Uh, one of them was a validation panel similar to JOSM because ID just didn't really have that at the time. It, it would tell you some stuff when you went to upload, but it didn't really tell you as you mapped. It didn't really give you that feedback as you went. So we built this panel, uh, and we, we thought that it might be great for mainline ID and showed it to Brian and Quincy, and they thought it was awesome, and they made it even better. They added like the ability to turn off on, off checks and uh, auto fixes, made it really nice. Uh, and now that's part of mainline ID, and you know it's a way to teach mappers as they go when they 
don't make a connection, they can now see immediately that, oh, there's a validation error now, I can fix that. And it even tells them what to do. We also work on the hot tasking manager. Uh, you know, many parts of the world are still very unmapped and uh, hot projects are one of the ways that we fill in the map. And this involves usually a lot of uh, fairly new volunteers. So, you know, one of the, we, we want to find ways to make uh, better mapping decisions for them. Uh, so we partner with Hot and DevSeed to make the assisted mapping for good tasking manager. DevSeed made the, this thing called the ML enabler, and with that, we can add additional data to tasks, like how hard they're gonna be, you know, how many roads are missing, how many buildings are there, how dense is it in terms of features. And we can guide users to like, if it's a new mapper, maybe to go to an easier task where there's less to do. Once they get there, uh, we've integrated our rapid editor uh, so they can use AI-assisted mapping. And uh, you know, that makes it much easier for anyone to map, but new, new people especially, because it shows you where the roads are already and it gives you a suggested tag, which a lot of new mappers struggle with. Adding tags is not necessarily a natural thing you do. But it's not just about tooling or AI. It's, it's also about ground truthing and working with local communities. We found that you know, having partners in countries really does make a big difference. Uh, but AI-assisted mapping frees up time to go do some of the ground truthing. So our, in HOT uh, Indonesia, our part, uh, in Indonesia especially, our partner HOT uh, has been using AI-assisted mapping for the past uh, almost two years now. And uh, it makes the mapping much faster, but it also, when we find areas where we're not really sure what's going on, such as uh, in this example, there's bridges that look fairly crossable in satellite, but when we go to them in person, we find that they look very different on the ground. So we identify places and we send out a team, and then we provide this information back to the community so that they can get a better idea of how to map when they encounter these situations. And, like I said, using the speed of AI-assisted mapping, we've managed to map about 95% of Indonesia at this point. Uh, so here's a short animation of daily progress through the country. So now Daniil is going to go into more detail on what we actually did with our Map with AI efforts. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah. Um, where, where should they start? Um, about 15 years ago, uh, satellite images became available for the wide scale of mapping. At that time, it was a lot of discussion about how satellite images are going to affect the mapping process. Mm -hmm. There were concerns about privacy, there were concerns about accuracy of the data, about alignment, but looking at what we have right now, right now we have a very comfortable uh, map on top of satellite images, knowing the limitation. Uh, alignment is a good example of this limitation. So I feel the very similar discussion happening nowadays about how computers can help mapping, what computers can do, what are those boring tasks and repetitive, repetitive tasks that the computer uh, can do, and what decisions the mappers would like to do themselves. A um, good example is the very basic uh, on-the-fly uh, verification checks, geometric verification. Is the road crossing the building? Uh, do we need a bridge? And so on and so forth. So th those checks are now very common in the ID editor, for example, in JOSM. In the future, we can imagine how those checks could evolve. Uh, for example, if you're doing the map change that dramatically changes the, the traffic pattern in the area, Maybe you should have a warning. If you're trying to map a building or the road that's not there on satellite image, maybe the machine can tell, like double check the, what you're doing right there. Another line of work that we are looking into is the suggested features. Turns out computer nowadays are very good at detecting the roads and buildings and can, can suggest it to the mapper to take a look and, and, and map this particular area. And potentially we can imagine in the future there are other tasks where a computer can help. First of all, the alignment, how to align the, the data between different uh, layers of the satellite images. Um, and another very interesting direction, how to conflate and merge together uh, data coming from different data sources. So as you know, here on Facebook, we experiment a lot with machine learning methods. 
uh, for mapping. We share it with the community, we get feedback from you. Sometimes it's very direct, very passionate feedback that we get into the account. And this year, actually, we think we figured something out. So we released Rapid several, uh, several weeks ago. The Rapid is a machine learning assistive uh, map editor. And this is how it works. So this line of work starts from the task and manager. So you select the area. Everything, everybody's familiar, I guess, with the workflow. And this is a standard workflow without Rapid, right? Let's say I need to map a couple of roads. Uh, while the mapping happens, so what we did, uh, Rapid is the extension of the ID editor. And by the way, thanks a lot for the ID editor team for their support. So here you select the road, you select the road type, and commit it to the OpenStreetMap. So here's a Rapid workflow. We went and detected those potential roads that could be added to the map, right? Now you click it on those roads, only on the ones that you like. You select the road types, if you guessed it incorrectly, which also happens. Then you address the validation checks, right? We, those are the validation checks that uh, just talked before. The roads that are not added to the map, the magenta roads, are not going to be committed. So it's only the roads that you selected get into the map. So it's completely up to you which, which part of the suggested roads you would like to use. And then you committed the open street map exactly as it is. So we believe this is the right balance between what one machine can do, like suggest you the edit, and between what decision you make in the end as, a, as the editor. Um, so what do we have? Oops. Uh, how does it work uh, behind the scene? Basically, it's all start with a very big computer vision model, deep neural network model, that uh, can detect the roads on the high resolution satellite images. This is quite a challenging task, in particular because terrains could be very, very uh, uh, challenging. In many cases, uh, the machinery is advanced enough so it does it correctly. Sometimes, actually, you can see the false positive, actually. Here's a good example of false positive here where the, the drive really bad that looks very similar to the road is falsely detected as, false, uh, as a road. And this is actually another case where the user can decide what, what should be or should, should not be added to the, to the map. Another interesting case with a lot of uh, free coverage here. Again, machine turns out they're quite good at uh, detecting the road. And of course, this is my uh, favorite example, this is Boston. So this is all the streets detected in Boston that we can find. Um, turns out, the Boston is very well mapped, right? Nobody needs the, the new uh, roads in Boston. So what we do, the last stage of this process, is to download the existing OpenStreetMap, you can see it on the left, and only keep the suggested roads that's already not, not yet mapped in the OpenStreetMap. So this is the magenta road, the suggested roads that you can add to the map. So this is basically how Rapid works. Uh, we released this and open source it several weeks ago. So got a lot of feedback, as usual. Uh, and it was, uh, part of the feedback was about suggested features, what we can do. Right now, we, uh, we can map it in several countries. So, so we expand in the list of countries on a week weekly basis. But another feedback was how to expand this whole editing process. One ask was to add the buildings. Another ask was quite general. So as you can see, the whole workflow is not even about machine learning, right? It's about some different data source that's common to the map and you can manipulate it. So we, we took two of those ideas and when you're talking about the external data source and buildings and United States, there's immediately one big data, data source come to mind. And this is, as you probably know, the Microsoft buildings. Microsoft Fall did a great job detecting all the footprints of the buildings in the United States. They presented this work in the OpenStreetMap conference, I believe, last year. And this is what we did. So today, we, are, we would like to show you the experimental feature. Uh, what we did this with building. And again, so this service is with the roads, right? We are already quite confident that we can detect and map the roads in the area. So this is a classic rapid flow. But think about the buildings now, right? The 120 millions of unmapped buildings in, in the United States. And this is experimental workflow that you can try today. 
And it works exactly the same as with the road. You select only the buildings that you like, you modify them, make sure that the shape is correct, change the attributes, and can add it to the map directly. So here's what you can do today. If you would like to learn more about this project, go to Map with AI and read about what you can do, and you can map roads from there. For the purpose of this conference, for where we, uh, we have the experimental endpoint, basic experimental site, where you can map the buildings today. So if you want to like to try it, it's very simple. Take your laptop, go to this particular link. It's going to be up for several days because it's experimental. Zoom into any part of the United States, any areas that you like, where you live or your parents live, check it out, and give us a feedback. So we are going to have the open session today from 3 to 4 o'clock in the next or second floor. Talk to us, try uh, rapid, and give us a feedback, constructive feedback, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more time, thanks a lot for the idea that it falls. Huge thanks for the Microsoft folks and for the Facebook team who built this tool, tested it, and released it several weeks ago. Thank you. For the new buildings that you've added for Microsoft, did you do any diffing like you did with the road so only buildings not present in OSM would be available for? Exactly, yeah. We, we run some very similar conflation, basically. We download the buildings on the fly and subtract the buildings that are already on OSM. I'm curious for the conflation, uh, is that done in rapid at runtime or do you do that offline? Uh, we do it, uh, actually it's a two-stage process because most of the things we can filter offline, but uh, somebody else could be editing the map exactly at the same time, right? So you actually do need to do, do it on the fly and that's what we do. Um, what were you using before OpenStreetMap? And for the Facebook for the first part of the presentation, and uh, when did you switch over to OpenStreetMap? Uh, that's a longer story, actually. It started before I was here. <laughs> so I, I think I uh, probably cannot cover it. I think before we were, you, what, what were you we using before? Yeah, we had here. here maps, okay. Yeah, but this was, yeah, several iterations. I was just wondering about the linear conflation that you're doing, because like I think I've seen some stuff where you do like building centroids, you like subtract the buildings where like centroids exist or something like that. But what's your approach for like figuring out if you're finding the same road but like shifted in OSM? Yes, actually, there's short answer and long answer. Short answer is this is very complicated. <laughs> 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 Long answer. Uh, it was really nice uh, presentation from Microsoft yesterday, so I can uh, connect with people. And there are people who are working on the conflation in our team that you can talk later on. But the, yes, it's hard to do. For buildings, a little bit easier than for the roads. For, ro for roads, it's a nightmare, but we figured it out. So as a lazy OSM user, one thing that I would just worry about um, that I wanted to ask you is, uh, is it how, how quickly can I approve the predicted roads? Because I could imagine the example that you gave where there's a river. If I'm going through quickly and I'm very excited about how quickly I can map this space, I might just say yes, 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 yes to everyone that I see. Um, so do you press a single letter to, to say yes, and then you have to physically click on the next feature, or how does that work? Yeah, right now, yeah. basically with every power comes a power of abusing it, right? So um, yes, yeah, so we put in several check in, uh, checks for that. You need to click on each uh, feature individually before you add it to the map. And that was the main reason why we didn't want to do this, those bulk, appro bulk approves. Yeah. One more question, if anyone. Sorry, novice uh, question, but imagery source, like how, how is that, ch is it constantly changing what you're using as a source imagery? 
This is a great question. Uh, yes, so we use uh, something very simple. We use uh, Maxar images, basically. And for this particular editor, we provide exactly the imagery that we're using for road mapping because we all the roads are pretty computed compute offline. But this is very similar to what's already in standard OpenStreetMap. Yeah. Thank you.